Last year at the start of the season, Vegas had this team at six and a half wins. And the Bears underperformed and, and wound up with a three-win season. Now, after all the off-season acquisitions and the, the draft trade and the draft picks and everything like that, Vegas now this year has this team at seven and a half wins. So they've only seen a one-win upgrade. And, you know, for all the fans out there projecting 10 or 11 wins, it, it's a hard argument to make because you're expecting them now to overachieve by, you know, three or four games. So, uh, you know, what uh, what's more of the realistic expectation here? I think you nailed it with uh, Vegas. Me and you go more on math and statistics and we go on Vegas, right? Vegas has been consistent for, for years and over time. And like you said, so if Vegas had the Bears at six and a half wins last year, and you would consider this team an underperforming team last year, and you have them at seven and a half wins this year, you're looking at a team that is mathematically just basically a one game better team. So if this is a team that underperforms, we are looking at a similar season to last year, like you said. So an underperforming team, one game better, we're a four win team, you know, that's that's gonna hurt. That's gonna be really painful. And uh, if, if you're an overperforming team and that's the argument you wanna make, um, one of my favorite commentators, Yurko, is always saying that this was a six or seven win team last year that only won three games. And while I love it and I agree, generally speaking, you know, you are what your record says you are. This year, if you are hoping to overperform, right? So if you're underperforming from last year, you're saying that it was a six and a half win team and it, they only won three games. Underperforming is three games? I don't think so. I think that's like a one or two game thing. So if you're overperforming, let's say you're seven and a half wins, you should be eight, nine wins. And everybody gets really excited about 10, 11, 12 wins and playoffs. Adam Rank and his 12 wins for the season is crazy, but um, I think realistic, we should, we should all go back to the medium of what we were expecting and we should go back to seven, eight wins. And that's a great season. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I saw that projection with the 12 wins that even blew my head. I mean, I just don't see how you get there. You know, um, injuries are always a part of the deal. At the end of the day, this team is just not as talented as people make it out to be. Um, you know, front to back, up and down, it, it is a team game. So as, as excited as we are for the offense making progress and things like that, we still have a ton to see from the defense in order to see if this team can actually compete in this league at a high level, you know. Um, takes a lot and with the way i don't know with the way this team is i think even if we did manage to squeak in the playoffs we would be you know a first round knockout i think if we're playing it feels like we're playing the fence and being the medium fans that just don't overhype but i think it's seven to eight wins and i think that's positive i think seven i'm gonna say seven wins and i think that's a good season but we've gone through every like defensive group and offensive group and we say is it an upgrade from last year right but defensive line clear upgrade over last year you had mike pinnell and armand watts starting in weeks two and three and we're talking about guys who are completely undrafted free agents or waiver wire pickup guys you know uh the defensive end situation is debatable but you added yannick and gakwe that's just i mean you had muhammad yeah aquadine muhammad was really bad and right. so um Defensive line, we're better. Linebackers, I think, across the board, we're clearly better. You know, Tremaine Edmonds in a system is, in this system, is arguably better than Roquan uh, Smith. In this system, Roquan, in a proper system, is clearly a top five linebacker, as we all knew because we loved Roquan, but he yeah, just... No. It was, a, it was a healthy leaving of the team where we just knew it wasn't long-term. Um, so linebackers across the board are better. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds is obviously an upgrade. Um, Jack Sanborn, instead of being your best linebacker, is now your third or fourth best. That's, a, that's an upgrade. And then the defensive backfield. Jaquan Brisker had a great season for a rookie, got hurt. Eddie Jackson was having a comeback season. Great, got hurt. And then, you know, Kyler Gordon gets to focus on his position. Tyreek Stevenson is looking really good. I, I really like Tyreek Stevenson. And then Jalen Johnson. So you are better on every level of defense. Not saying much, because your defense was probably 30th, 29th at best. So now if you're 20th, like you said, or maybe in the top 16, hopefully, top half of the league, that's a huge upgrade. And maybe that does put Justin Fields in position to have some more bombs and like we saw in the preseason, hopefully, you know, he 
he has a few 300 yard games whether that's a 50 yard screen I'll still take a 300 yard game the best quarterbacks in the league get those plays where their guy does most of the work 80 yards and you know Joe Burrow has 200 yards 250 and 80 of it came after the catch from Jamar Chase I mean that's that's great so on yeah, defense I, mean, I hope you're right I think it's I hope it's top half of the league at best at worst you can't be worse than you know the 24th 25th team in the league again this year how many 300 yard passing games does fields have 300 zero zero yeah i'll I'll be confident saying zero so yeah i would uh, take two i would take two to four this year yep me too yep just give me a little flash show me some steps forward you know what i mean and like you said that's going to come from you know one of the things we suffered from last year was yards after catch we were one I think of the it was one of the worst in the league, and one then, of the worst in the league. Yeah. yeah. So to come out this season as as critical as fans are to throw two touchdowns and two screen passes that both go house, um, that's actually very encouraging, for my opinion, because it's like you know you focus on one of your weaknesses. You got a guy like DJ Moore in here to come in and help fix your weaknesses, and look at that. It it looks like. You it know, shows it up might, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it might make some effect. So hopefully that pans out and that translates into a much better offense this year. Um, on offense, you know, if we're doing the same thought experiment, I think receiving core is clearly better. Um, hopefully with all your starters healthy on the offensive line, you're better. I think the running back position overall is probably the most questioned, right? Like, did you get better? Did you not? We don't know yet. You might have, but you might have gotten worse. And... Um, yeah, and then the tight end position got better. So, like you said, it, we're we're definitely on the upswing, but um, it's all it's kind of up in the air, and I think we'll we'll know it pretty quickly. I think this year the learning curves are less steep, and so if you're not doing well by week six and doing what you're intending to do by week six, like as an offense and as a defense, well then it's now you're missing talent, or now it's bad coaching. So the conversation stops being, hey, this is one of the worst teams in the league talent-wise, to, okay, now the talent's not that bad. Where's the problem now?